<clears throat> Greetings. So, um, hi, Sita Liana Crafts. Um, hi, Grace. Hi, Sam. Um, hey, Otto. I hope you're feeling better. Um, hi, Dan and Abby. Um, the pink masking fluid is by Holbein. It's pretty awesome. I wish I wish it was available in a jar because I I kind of dig the pink <laughs> masking fluid. Um, I'm still unsure which paints I want to use today, so... You might be able to <laughs> hear some weird background noise, which is um, the neighbor speaking really loudly. <laughs> um, hello Malvina! And Colleen. Oh, Nurse Jazz. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun to draw. <laughs> um blue masking fluid, uh, Holbein, the jar of Holbein masking fluid is light blue. Um PBO masking fluid is blue. Uh Molotov is really blue. Um, I think it's um, Grumbacher is orange. Schminke has a blue and a white one. And as far as I can tell, uh, this one by Holbein is the only pink one I've seen. Um, my Shinhan pass paints are not exactly set up. I am waiting on a palette to use them because I'm I have like a mental block about using palettes where I can't fit all the colors in there. And since I have the box of forty eight, oh, <laughs> Windsor Newton is yellow. Oh, <laughs> yuck. Um, the paper is um, Hanemule Cezanne paper. Um, the masking fluid is by Holbein. And yeah, this is painter's tape. And um, the brushes are the Escoda Ultimo, but I am a bit wary about using them because, like, I did this this morning. I think it's dry, but. I really don't want to mess up my brushes with this stuff because these are my favorite brushes so far. So, yeah. Hello, Patricia and the VIP Roach. Uh, the live chat replay thing. Okay, um, it is on by default. And I have to wait until the stream is over to go into the settings and disable it there. So I cannot um, remove it for now, but as soon as um, the finished stream will let me, I will turn it off because I really don't like it. Um, can you tint your own masking fluid or will it stain the paper? It will probably stain the paper. You're better off buying one that is already tinted, I think. Uh, a lot of people uses the PBO one. Um, I don't have it, but I've I've used it before. It's it's really easy to find. It's really inexpensive, but it stinks. It has this um, ammonia smell that's really disgusting. So if you're sensible to smell, maybe not that one. Uh, this pink one by Holbein has no smell, and uh, I used a bit of the transparent Schminke one, and it has no noticeable smell either. But the transparent one is kind of difficult to see, <laughs> so um, yeah, you could try the blue one, perhaps. Uh, the travel brushes, uh, like I said, these are um, the... Oh, yeah, I, I, I've tried to set the camera in the proper um, flippage, 
but like regardless of if I put the the uh, image in normal or mirrored, it stays the same. So um, <laughs> I can't really fix it. So I'm sorry. I'm not left-handed. I am right-handed, but my camera is um, dumb. So yeah. So um, the Ultimo Escoda set. If you have access to these Ultimo brushes, like regular. Um, I'm pretty sure they are worth it just as good and less expensive, but this was the only round one I have access to, so I eventually got them to try them. Uh, which one smells? The PBO one, I think. Maybe Otto can confirm. But it, it's, um, it's pretty thin, it works really well, and you can peel it off really satisfyingly. But as far as I can remember, it it really like has the ammonia smell. Um. This is the ones I used for this painting. So this is the masking ink by Holbein, and it's pink, and it's really nice. And I use this um, Schmincke. Uh, drawing gum which is transparent it says on it it says um, liquid frisket drawing gum neutral ammonia free so yeah yeah okay so um, yeah the PBO one stinks and the Windsor Newton one a any masking fluid that has ammonia in it or if it doesn't say uh, and you're sensible to smell, don't get it. Try to find one, like the Schmincke one, that says it has no ammonia in it. Like, I can put my nose into this one, which I'm gonna do right now. Carefully still, I mean, it, it has a, a faint smell still, but um, unless you put your nose in it, um, it's pretty safe. So, yeah. Um, other fun news, while I still... Um, think about which paint I'm gonna use. I finally got a half mask. So speaking of smells and all that, I got this one um, for when I'm making paints. And perhaps that's something you can look into as well if you're sensible to smells. It comes with um, filters that you can attach. Like I got the particle filters somewhere. They're like pink round discs and you can replace them easily and this is really lightweight and it's not very expensive so I think it's a good option if um, smells are really something that bothers you you can get a mask like this and the particle or the um, steam filters and they should that that should help you um, with stinky things all right I haven't tried um, frisket tape or sheet, mostly because I haven't found any. I think it would be fun to like um, do it old school and mask whole areas. I think it's possibly a more work, but um, did I say something wrong? Is sensitive to smells not not a thing? Your glasses steam up when you use it. Um, if you uh, if you have the proper size and you you um, put it on um, the proper way, uh, it should be sealed around your face, so no hair no air should be coming out of it, so it shouldn't steam up your glasses. Um, I got it from Amazon. It's like twenty bucks. The filters are a bit more expensive, but since I don't, like, I think it can be expensive if you wear the mask every day, like for work and you work eight hours a day and you have to use a mask every day, then maybe you go through the filters really fast. But since I just want to use it for um, when I'm making paint or perhaps working with um, something that is dusty, I don't, I don't see a need to um, change the filters often.
The clanging noises is me looking for a pallet. I found my Sennelli palette. I made a better chart for this one. Ugh. Mm, crud. All right. This is going to be experimental. <laughs> like I, I have the um, I have the palette here, and I have the. The chart for the colors but it's not the, pr the good chart I'm pretty sure I made a new one because I've like moved things around and maybe added a few so yep that's gonna be um, funny brand of the the half mask I have is 3M. It's it's fairly common. There is two models. One is the one like I got and you have it in small, medium and large and there's a more expensive model with silicone um, for the, the face part so if you are um, have a sensitive skin you can opt for the silicone mask. It's really really lightweight. I was worried when um, Oh, hello, Pico. Oh, cuckoo. Mm -hmm. I was worried when I got the, the 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 box from Amazon that they forgot to put the thing in it because the box was so lightweight. I th I thought it was empty, but no, there was the um, the mask in it. I have cat problems. All right, bye, Pico. So this is um, just water, and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna wet everything first, and start from there. And I use, uh, this is a Winsor & Newton um, mop um, and goat, goat, goat hair, yeah, and this is the one I usually use to um, spread water around. I'm not sure what it's for, but uh, I have it and it's there, so why not use it? Uh, 
Um, I speak to my babies in French. Hey, 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 come on. <laughs> Say hi. You big annoying baby. Hmm. Do you want some lovin'? Do you want to paint? Do you want to do the painting instead of me? Hmm. Hmm. Alright. Now that my painting is full of kitty hair. Alright. <laughs> oh, Just gonna prepare a decent pool of color. Should I make the night sky purple or blue? I feel like I've been using a lot of blue lately with the um the underwater paintings for the AC. <laughs> no painting is complete without the little kitty hair. Yeah. Purple. All right. I'm gonna prepare something over here. I have to put the, the palette on the separate table because my desk is not very big. <laughs> Moon glow. Blurple. <laughs> I kind of like blurple. <laughs> Forgot to bring some swatching paper. Right, so I'm gonna start with this blurple color. I don't have Moon Glow in this palette. This is the Sennelier paints I have, so Moon Glow is a Daniel Smith color. I'm getting a good idea of making like a galaxy background. But I would need the galaxy brush for that. This is um, just a good old Tacon brush, size 12. It's a cheap um, snap Tacon brush by um, Princeton. Okay, so let's try this. I think it's the first time I really tried to do a galaxy background with Cinelli colors. So I hope they will um, pan out. <laughs> Don't disappoint, guys. Don't. I didn't tape the paper down, so um, if you happen to see some buckling, that's because there is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the 
Chocolate is super tasty. What are you talking about, Dan? Then you mask the cat. Um, nope, not the whole cat. Because um, it would be uh, its color would be affected by the surrounding lights. So if it's nighttime, um, it wouldn't be like its natural color. It would be bluish. Oh, it's just the, the brush I'm used for Galaxy. I don't think there's anything special with it. It's just the size. It's the size 12 Tacon. I'm just used to it, so... Um, since the paints are different, the paper is different, I will try to keep at least one thing the same. So I have a smidgen of control over what is happening. Oh, Milky Way chocolate. Mm. It's just a paper towel. What's the pink? It is opera pink. Keep. Let's pick them again. Just click on the um, emoji icon again. <laughs> Milky Way always tasted better after it was sat on. <laughs> What? <laughs> There's a story there. <laughs> so this is dioxazine purple. Like if you want the bright purple, this is the one to get. It's one of my favorite colors because it's so intense. Do you guys have colors like that that when you buy Say you want to venture into a new set of colors. Are there colors that you will go to first? Like you will think, mm, well, I'm gonna try this color and this color first and then I'll see. Gonna add in a bit of in then thrown blue. I I improvising. I'm not no planning here. I'm just splooching some colors around. It's been a while since I I've done a galaxy painting. I think I missed it. Um, Eve, is your upper rose from Sunny in a pan or a tube? It's a full pan. I think I bought the tube as well because it's it's kind of difficult to find. Um, and I really like their, their um, upper pink color. It's not my favorite, but it's really good because it's a bit more on the um, pigment side rather than the fluorescent dye. So it's less neon and it feels like it would be a bit more permanent because there is more of PR122 in it than the um, 
than the die. Um, hello Heather! Um, I think there's a few people I didn't see come in and didn't say hi to, but so, um, hi everyone! The dots are masking fluid. Uh, it was not planned to make this into a galaxy, so I, um, I masked some dots just to make things easier, but it's possible to come back with um, gouache and make the dots after. You don't have to and plan them beforehand. I might have to use a Holbein color though for the... if I want to have some black space into this um, galaxy thing. Because I do believe that theirs is still my favorite. Yeah, I, I really don't know why the um, the upper pink is so difficult to find from Cinelier. It's so weird. Okay, um, Sam is saying that the, their basics are ultramarine, lemon yellow, carmine, and burnt sienna. And also all the purples there. <laughs> ah, yes. Purples, purples. I don't know why I, I kind of like purples that much. I just like it. It's a fun color. I don't really mind masking out the clouds because um, I can come back with white paint after and do something or try to um, find where they are with uh, this. <laughs> where is my line? <laughs> it's over there. Okay, just have an idea of where they are and come back with the white paint after and fix it. Well, I think it's more light fast. That's just my um, my two cents on the topic. Uh, because uh, from all the comparison vids I did about it, it it felt as if um, it had a lot more of the uh, the pigment in it rather than the dye. Right. So I have this is my this is one of my multiple makeshift Holbein palettes. And I think this one has the neutral... yeah. Is that neutral tint or paints gray? Mm. Um, oh! Otto is saying that uh, the upper pink is difficult to find because Cinelier has is having trouble sourcing the pigments for upper rose. It's the only color that is missing from their full range set. Oh no! Like, it would be one of the reasons why I would want the full range set, it's to have this color. <laughs> I love it so much. Right.
Um, hi, Kathy. So, um, oddly enough, I think that uh, cellulose paper is still the best um, to paint galaxies because the, the paint doesn't really absorb in it, so you can um, more easily bring it back, bring it back, bleh, bring it back to um, a lighter color if you need. On this honeymill paper, I can't really bring back a light color, so I'm gonna try and bring back a more vibrant color instead. Like I'm gonna add in some perhaps pink and purple. I think it doesn't look too bad. I don't know what you guys think, but I think Mgram is one of the few brands I can think of that doesn't have a, an opera color. Oops, sorry, I nudged the camera. As you can see, the colors they don't um, they really sink in the paper, so I don't I don't have access to that um, white again. I used like um, colors that will stain, so there's that. <laughs> it's not like I'm helping my case, but um, yeah. So this side is much darker than the other one. It's kind of bothering me. Good, thank you. I, I feel I feel um, <laughs> more more um, secure in my idea to know that you guys agree. Yeah, Grace, you have a good point. Um, uh, part of the reason t they can stand not having a lot of Daniel Smith is because it's just right there and it's always gonna be there, especially as someone who lives near where the paint is made, so yeah. That's kind of why I'm, I'm a bit nervous about Holbein, is that I never know when they will stop carrying it, carrying it, <laughs> carrying it at my local store, and um, I, I would be really sad if they did, because it's one of my favorite brands. I know, I know, not everyone's favorite brand, but I kind of like having them and having access to them. Core, that's true, Core doesn't have opera. Oh, hello, Cyan. I thought Old Holland had some kind of neon pink color. I love doing galaxies. It's it's a really relaxing um, thing to paint because you're basically just throwing colors on the canvas and making a big mess. 
I have I have a, a helper. Pico is here with me. I can't have the cat cam because the camera is currently filming me paint and I can't really um, move it around easily. But she's there. A the tiny cat helper. So the only thing that's a bit of a bummer is that it's going to be much lighter when it dries. Like It looks fine now, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to feel like it's a bit lackluster when it's dry. <laughs> Heather says that we need to do another with a similar background, but with the broom going haywire. <laughs> yeah, that would be the follow-up, like what happens when you um, sleep <laughs> on the broom. This is never gonna dry. <laughs> hmm. All right, so guys, we have an issue here: is that if I want to let this dry, um, I gotta set it aside. So <laughs> I can't really use the the hair dryer on it because of all the masking fluid. It's gonna be baked into the paper, and that's not ideal. Pretty sure you agree with me. Well, so you probably have a way of getting the the um, whole set of Holbein at a much better price than any of us. I'm trying to catch up on chat. Um, the um, Holbein Opera is my favorite. It is absolutely brilliant and neon and in your face, and I really like it. Seriously, Holbein in Japan, it's it's like, what, two dollars per tube? Like the the five mLs? Oh, sure, it's five mL, but it's watercolors. You you can do a lot with the five mL tube. Oops. Oh, that's my phone. All right, so um what to do, what to do, what to do. Someone is making my phone do noises, so if you hear weird noises, that's my phone. And the laundry machine. So yeah, guys, um, 
what to do while this is drying. Alright, so, um, should we experiment with, um, the blood wire in this? <laughs> I'm gonna mute the mic if I'm to use the blood wire because... Oh, but if I use it, I'm gonna scare away my cat. Trying to think of a plan B. Um, hum, hum, hum. Yeah, I, I prefer to let the, the paint dry um, without any help when I can because it's it's usually more of a fun effect like everything that that can granulate has the time to granulate properly and um, yeah so I don't think well, I'll use a bit of cobalt teal so yeah there's there's gonna be a bit of granulation there um, the Renaissance paint uh, that's gonna be next week <laughs> these are for next week <laughs> um, start another picture brush back practice the thing is is that I usually um, doodle sketch these pictures on the computer and then I transfer it to uh, watercolor paper because it's easier and it takes less time so I'm a bit um, I'm thinking I'm thinking Heather has really good ideas. <laughs> um, there's something I wanted to show last week and I forgot. So hold on. I'm just gonna have to switch around a bit. Okay. 
it's just gonna be I'm gonna try to do this super quick but I wanted to show um, a software that is pretty neat in that it really manages to um, replicate the effects of watercolor and I, I was I was thinking about it because um, um, Marty and Steve had a, a live with a Hasra mix and they were saying that there wasn't anything that was as good as the real thing. So um, yeah, just quickly. Um, let me set this up. Uh, Okay. So there is this software that's called Rebel, but it's in, it's in the French way to say it, so it's Rebel. And can you guys hear me? Anyway, just super quick. But it's um, it's supposed to be able to replicate watercolor. And it's kind of interesting the way it does it. Like you use any of the brushes and you just, I'm using the mouse, but you just um, use it around. And when you let go of the mouse button, uh, that's when the water effects happen. And if you grab another color and you put it on top, like stuff is gonna happen. And you can see that the background has the texture of it and you can use different like this has a very rough look, but when you let it um, mingle and interact, it's gonna replicate the effect of watercolor better. And you have like um, sharp lines on the dry paper and you have softer lines on where it's wet. So yeah, this is, this is really, um, just quickly because I, I was a bit bummed, I forgot last week. But you can do like pretty fun stuff. Oops. Uh, okay. Gee, Heather, you almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> so yeah, just 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 this quickly. So I think they're trying to make things that are like watercolor and traditional media it's not perfect but it's kind of fun to see what they what they manage to do so yeah all right back to back to back to Okay. Chris is saying that you can tell that spring is coming because their animal are shedding. Um, like you, you can add both Peko and Scouts. Uh. Yeah, this would be better. Okay. Um, yeah, my, my cats are shedding as well. So much shedding. Hmm. Peko is still with me. Um, the the software is on computer as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know if there's a version on tablet, but 
you can you can use it on your computer and basically draw with the mouse or a tablet if you have one but yeah it's it's just it's kind of fun and it's not too expensive either like it's not like photoshop rebel is a software you have to pay once and it's about a hundred dollars so it's not that bad colors keep creeping in so yeah I think when I'm gonna eventually redo this as well I'm probably gonna try to mask um, the whole outline of the cat just because the the washes they really like creep in <laughs> creep in the color and you gotta be careful to remove all the puddles Because those doesn't dry super well. Um, a question from Otto saying, "What software do you use to edit your videos?" Um, I used uh, Adobe Premiere since I'm already paying for the full package, and it's expensive. Um, I used Photoshop, Premiere, and InDesign from Adobe. So. Magic eraser to okay. Um, Otto is asking if I've tried magic eraser to lift colors. I haven't. Um, for two reasons. First, I don't have a magic eraser, and then, um, it's kind of abrasive. So I'm worried that if I remove a color with it, if I paint over the surface, it's gonna look different anyway. I'm really glad I didn't use the blow dryer because Peko is being really cute right now. So, all right, I got this uh, big block of um, um, uh, pulp paper, cellulose paper. So let's grab a sheet and do something with it, just for fun. So, um, sketch suggestions. Oh, um, Otto is saying that they tried the magic eraser for the first time with their new landscape painting and it worked real well. Um, do you... Uh, how do you use it? Cat hat mat. <laughs> Cat. A cat. <laughs> Okay, so the words are cat, hat, mat, cat again, bat, bat again, fat, um, pat, <laughs> sat, tat. <laughs> There's a series of, of paintings of cats with um, tattoos that are pretty awesome. Fat cat sat on a mat while wearing a hat and getting a tat.
this is gonna be difficult because usually <laughs> when I sketch, I sketch really rough and then I, I try to fix it using like reference and other stuff. But this is gonna be pretty um, pretty rough anyway. <laughs> Okay, so for the magic eraser, you just wet the, the sponge and rub it gently. Hmm. I'll, I'll see about grabbing one the next time I see one. It's interesting. <laughs> guess we take Caterty seriously around here. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. Oh, this is such a mess. I can't even remember what what's supposed to be what. This uh, this red pencil is not really erasable, but. You guys are on fire with the words that end in AT. Otto, Otto just suggested brat, chat, flat, spat, frat, vat. Yes, I'm gonna try to do kitties getting tattoos. Well, one, one big, what is it? Was a fat cat on a mat, something, something, getting tats. No, it shouldn't close pulling out. I really picked the worst pencil ever to do this. Like, it's basically not erasable. <laughs> so, I guess... I guess a fishy tattoo would work. It's gonna be so, so derpy. <laughs> You think cats, like, they... Well, I guess he would paint the fur, so yeah, it's probably gonna be using a brush. So not, not a real tattoo. Because if you tattoo a cat skin, unless it's a, a sphinx cat, it's not gonna show. Oh no! <laughs> Stop making auto cough! Come on, guys!
Oh, um, there is a good tip if I can find it. At my local um, library, library bookstore, yeah, bookstore, um, they sell these um, animals, like figurines, plastic figurines. They're a decent quality, uh, like good anatomy, so they are really awesome for reference. So I got a horse, I got a tiger, got a bunch of cats. Um, I have foxes. I got a um, snow owl. I got a the otter. Yeah. I got a baby fox. I got a panther. I got a baby lynx and a squirrel. And there are like a zillion of them. And they're a bit expensive expensive like maybe from four to twelve dollars but these are excellent for drawing like even if the animal is in a pose like this one it's walking but I can still see in physical shape like how the tail is how the, the, the legs the face and you can you can move it around and have a better idea of how it would look like so you want to draw something where you look under the, the chin of an animal well if you have that kind of a figurine of an animal it's really handy I'm gonna keep the cats. So yeah, so I can use these um, guys to check for the ears, check for the face, and it's a good reference. I know I have two cats and I could easily reference them, but they are often like in a position that's not helping anyone. So yeah. Yeah, they do. These uh, little animals, they're really well done. There's even like um, fur texture on the the, the the plastic. They're made by uh, Schleich. Schleich. <coughs> uh, anyway, it's a German brand. And like I think even dollar star animals wouldn't be that that bad. I mean, not accurate reference necessarily, but if you just want to know about like where's the the shape or the main shapes like I can see that there's a big shape here and there's the face and how the head connects to the body and where the shoulders are because for someone who has cats I really have a hard time drawing them properly so I really appreciate having these um, these little plastic things and I just remembered about them recently like way way after starting the um, this, this arm is rubbish but way after starting the series with them, um, with twinkles, so yeah, really helpful. Oh, um, okay. Uh, about the magic eraser, apparently, uh, to be careful with it because after after use, it turns to powder and become airborne. And there has been um, lung issues. Yeah, they even have the the jelly beans painted on. And like, if it's a male animal, it's usually relatively anatomically correct. So, um, yeah. This, this is a silly drawing that doesn't work really well, but yeah.
Um, talking of cat details, Otto was asking uh, why did Studio Ghibli need to draw in the testicles of the cat bus? Well, you know, you, you know that they have the tanuki and there is a lot, well there is a lot, I know there is um, a festival all about um, the phallus, so yeah, I don't think and you, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that most Japanese people are um, culturally offended by um, male genitalia. <laughs> Unless, I mean, it's not pornographic, it's just there. Uh, and yeah, if you have seen like animals that are not um, neutered, well, it's also very there, so yeah. Yeah, the boy plastic cats have um, boy plastic bits. So this is a lady and this is a dude cat. I don't know if you can see that on the black little cat, but it's male. And this one is sitting, so there's nothing there. Yeah. I think it would be weird if they censored it because these are so accurate to the real animal that it would be kind of weird. But then again, it's kind of weird to see it as well. So <laughs> I'm not so sure where I stand on all of this. All right, so this is just going to be a quick fun thing that I'm gonna add some colors on just for the sake of it because it's not gonna be anything else. I'm a bit um, still not sure what I want to draw and paint so it's not like I have a super clear idea in mind of what my style should be or I can use picks Pico for reference for markings. Oh, okay. Um, the cat bus is a character in one of the Ghibli movies. It's what it says it is. It's like a school bus, but like a cat too. <laughs> you can Google it. If you Google cat bus, it's probably going to be the the one thing you get the most because it's it's fairly unique <laughs> and um. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, your seal is a lady seal then. Right, I can tell you that the horsey I got is a dude horsey and I'm not gonna show that on camera. It's kind of like the the one bit of, of figure painting, well not figure painting, like um, when you go to a figure drawing class or, or like something similar or you draw animals from reference, like, it's the one part where it's a bit more difficult to switch the brain off because you sort of get to this region of the body and automatically there's a... I don't know about you, but I, I think like, mm, how do I censor this? Or do I censor this? Do I have to? Is it... What do they expect me to do? So it's like um, kind of weird to just... Um, to just have this uh, moment of what do I do with this when you were super in the painting before. Um, hello Jacqueline, welcome, welcome. Oh, new follower from In Liquid Color. Well, thanks for coming by. I think Denise has mentioned you a couple of times. Yeah, Grace, um, this is a bit of an impromptu thing because I painted the, um, the, the drawing I wanted to paint, but it turned out to, uh, to be, we, well, we made it into a galaxy at, eventually, so it's a big wet thing that needed time to dry, so 
uh, while waiting for it to dry, uh, I decided to sketch something else. And people suggested um, something like a fat cat sat on a mat. And I added the getting a tat too. Um, so yeah. So this is, we don't usually talk about the um, anatomically, anatomically correct models and that kind of stuff. Um, speaking of, like you can see it's still kind of wet because it's still buckly, but it's not, not like glossy anymore. And you can also see that the colors have, uh, are far more muted than they were before. I don't like to do uh, more than one layer on galaxies. I think there's a cat hair in there, yeah. Because it, it kind of... Um, I don't know, it's, it's a personal thing, but it really... Like, I wish I could add another layer of exactly this to make it more intense, not add more colors in other places so it gets um, more confused. <laughs> yeah, well, you're gonna fit in nicely, Jacqueline. <laughs> um, yeah. It's still a bit wet. I'm afraid the co you can see the colors when the paper is wet. The colors, even if I, um, even if I remove the the colors with the paper towel many times, it still creeps in, and I think this is because it's um, cotton paper. Like it absorbs the water more, so it stays wet more. So when it's wet, the paint just flows back into the wet spot. That wasn't no longer wet enough. Come on, dry faster, you. I am not one of those person who can um, draw the super fancy tattoos like like Jacqueline de Leon or um, Audra. Like they, they just add tattoos and it looks awesome. Yeah, I'm like, hey, squiggly lines. That's that's gonna be fine. Yeah, let's put a sun on the back of this one head. This one's head. Is it tabby? Should be a tabby all over, shouldn't he? My tabby model is sleeping, so I cannot bother her to <laughs> check her markings. So I guess we have an official stream cat. Like Pico is always around when I live stream. Oh, well, that's that's not too bad, is it? It's messy. <laughs> Welcome to me. <laughs> but yeah, I guess I could have had a bit of color on it.
There are things from the chat I am not going to repeat here. <laughs> What is said is what is said in the chat stays in the chat. Yes, I do stream every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's always something about cats, which is why we call it the Catterday live streams. Yeah, it's a good thing the chat is not going to stay there. I think some people might find it a bit odd. Or maybe it would be just as, as odd to have me mention anatomically um, correct um, plastic models. just gonna keep this one monochrome since I used a red pencil to sketch. I think it would perhaps be a bit confusing if I used um, like too many colors on this sketch. The thing is with sketch is that I never know what to do with them after. Like I put them in the bin, uh, not in the bin, but I put them in a, a cardboard box and they stay there and at some point the cardboard box is full and I just bin a bunch of stuff. Which is a bit... Not that I care that the, the, the drawings end up in the garbage bin, but more that it's, it's more waste. I wish I could find ways to recycle it, but I don't think paint is recyclable. Yeah, everything is written. I forgot that the camera was flipped. <laughs> I don't think I am Da Vinci. I think I would be a lot richer if I were. <laughs> hey, that's weird. That's right, you got it. The drawing like in super bright red color and flipped. I don't have any urge to design crazy flying machines or any machine. <laughs> it's not my favorite part of painting. Oops, sorry. I think I managed to nudge everything and make my chair squeak. So uh, do I get a point? Or being super noisy. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see if we can do something with this. It's mostly dry. It's dry enough, as I like to say. I am mixing colors to paint the broom first. Let's see if I can make this work with the background. Because that's the thing since it's um, at night. I don't want the colors to be like super stark, like this is a brown broom and it's gonna be brown. Like, it would be influenced by the colors of the surrounding, so it wouldn't be brown, p 
pure brown anymore. It would be brown affected by the night colors. What I like to do to keep a painting cohesive is to use like the same colors all over the place. Like I almost never wash um, a palette. I just reuse everything and make it part of the whole thing. Like I'm reusing parts of the purple I use for the sky in in the broom I'm painting and and I'm gonna use some of it in, in the cat and everything. I'm probably uh, well, probably possibly gonna come back over some of the uh, masked areas if they are too contrasty with everything else, like if they are too white, too too stark. I'm gonna add in like a, a, a very very pale wash into them to make them uh, stand out less. And since I used some of the neutral tint by Holbein, I'm gonna use it again for at least a hat. And I know that this is not the Sinelli color, but since I've used it already... Okay, um, I gotta make a parenthesis to say that Holbein are pretty awesome when it comes to popping out colors from palettes. Like, this is a bit of a mess because it's been through many stages, but most of the colors you can pop right out. Like, pop! And it's super nice, it's super clean underneath, it doesn't explode into dust, it doesn't it doesn't behave like M gram paints. <laughs> um I've had to change my M gram palette again um recently and it was pretty difficult to like scrape away the paint and move it to something else. Um like I've seen some paints like Daniel Smith Ultramarine that will pop away from a palette even if you don't want it to but the Holbein ones they're just the perfect formula to stay there and and you just take a spatula or a um, palette knife and you just pop the colors right out the only colors that don't behave like that are the um, Irodori colors but that's because they're a diff different formula <laughs> And yeah, Lotto agrees with me. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult because I can hardly see um, Roger in there. If I were to mess up and say paint over Roger or something, I would fix it by using gouache over it. Like um, gouache or either you get white gouache and you mix it with your watercolors to have um, opaque watercolors. Since he's a mouse, he would be probably mousy gray, so it's fairly easy to fit in the white in there. So it's not exactly stressful. I try not to be stressed when painting because that that just defeats the purpose of painting in my opinion. Like I do this because it's fun, not because I want to be like super stressed out. Oh, Cyan is getting a puppy soon. I hope so. <laughs> you guys are, are shooting ideas and I can't write them down. <laughs> I 
wish I could. These are great. Trying to find the color I'm gonna paint the, um, the cat in. So I decided the cat would be gray instead of black because it's a bit um, it's too easy to disappear in the background. Or since it's a witchy cat, if I do night night settings, it's just gonna disappear. So I want to do gray instead, but that that's a bit more work to find the proper color to make it work. Oops. I didn't wait for the broom to be dry to paint the cat next to it, so it's gonna merge a bit together. It's gonna look nice. I think oops is the thing I see the most often when I paint, so... I own it. It's okay. Um, hey, thanks for keeping track of them, Grace. That's really awesome. And as for the line, the lines of the painting, because they are pretty much gone, um, that's okay. I, I'm just gonna come back and paint over it. I was able to draw it once, I will be able to draw it again. And I have the sketch if I need some reference, so. It's all good. I'm gonna really <laughs> let this dry before I add more to it. Like you can tell that even if I, um, even if the hat looked dry, all the water from the the coat seeped in. I'm really not used to using this um, this cotton paper. Like cellulose paper is. Um, I don't know, since it doesn't soak in the water, I think it's easier to work fast. And I'm kind of used to working fast and I have to wait for stuff to dry and I'm not used to that. Oops, and I dropped some water on it. There. This is not absorbent. Come on, I need a paper towel. Wow. <laughs> the colors did not lift at all. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm still stuck again waiting for stuff to dry. So I have um, there. I have some white Shinhan pass color. I'm gonna work on the clouds. I think using this. So I'm just gonna pick up some of my dirty water because it's already all the colors of my sky anyway. So even if the gouache ends up a bit tinted by it, that's just going to be perfect. So I grabbed some gouache with my brush and I just mix it in with the, the dirty water to get really soupy color. This is not going to be very white on the paper. It's pre pretty diluted, but it's a good base for um, for establishing where my clouds are. 
and it's gonna show through the colors of the night sky which are gonna make everything um, fit in better in my opinion I hope I'm in camera oh I keep track of where the white paint is because it's white in a white palette so I'm always um, headed towards the wrong palette for it The thing with white in color is that it will cool off the color, so um, I think it's nice for the clouds, which are gonna be like cold anyway. And um, like I, I could do something around the uh, the moon, but I'm worried it would be too cold, and I kind of want want the, the the moon to be a warmer presence in the painting. I would also have to paint the moon once. I remove the um, the masking fluid. Does um does Theo says oops as well? Does he does he work with the hoops? Oops, oops. Like, I, I haven't watched um, his video lately because he's been doing a lot of, um, like, uh, tablets and screens and that kind of stuff that doesn't really, um, like, it's really not my area of expertise, so I feel like I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't relate to the kind of um, items he's been talking about, but yeah. Bao Fam has some really, really relaxing videos and... Whoa, the technique on his work is just so pretty. So yeah, that's the first layer of the cloud. I'm gonna let it dry and add again and just build up some opacity in many layers so that it's not too flat. And yeah, and you can see some um, cauliflowers on the hat because I'm not a patient person and I'm not used to this paper, so. Um, this is a bit annoying, but yeah. As I've said many times, all these paintings with the, um, the this, this, this theme, um, they're like practice and I'm slowly working on repainting all of them so that I can sort of test once what work, what doesn't work. And when I'm when I, I've painted them once, I can use this to do a better version and eventually make a booklet. Um, I haven't seen um, Theo's tiny paintings. I've seen many of them on um, Instagram. Like, uh, there's uh, an artist whose name is uh, Leigh Anna Newell. And she paints some really nice tiny portraits. Uh, not tiny portraits, but tiny landscapes. It's pretty amazing. Welcome back, Otto. So, yeah, gotta wait for it to dry again. Come on, dry. Dry. <laughs> So yeah, the, the quick uh, rundown of the few mistakes on this so far is not using um, masking fluid to ward off the colors on, of the, the background to seep, from seeping into the characters. I don't really know how to make this work because I kind of like that there's a bit of the color in it, but am I better off like masking it off and when I paint these, I work with the colors I use for the background, so the color is back into the the painting as well. Or if I like put color everywhere and then deal with the areas. And then the other thing is that perhaps I would use um, 
cellulose paper for this one just to have a better galaxy something that's a bit more punchy since the colors they sit more on top of the cellulose paper it's a bit more bright hey Stephen I didn't see you come in Oh, Bao's tiny painting. Um, no, I haven't yet. Tiny Tober drawings. Oh, I really need to check this out. Oh, that's so that's so nice, Otto. And mmm, chocolate covered strawberries. That's kind of a great thank you gift. Okay, um, it's not bra. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, it's been almost two hours of live stream. I could end this here and um, show this painting finished in the next stream and work on a new painting in the next stream. But if I work on a new painting in the next stream, I'm gonna try to prepare if I um, think that it might run into the same issues as this one and have some downtime where it has to dry. So yeah, as you can see, there are kind of like issues with galaxies, like this color, this was too wet. So the color from over here sort of ran down the side here. And when I'm going to remove the tape, it's going to have this weird line. Um. got some other galaxies I've done here and um, if you keep in mind that these are all single layer um, these colors they're like far more bright than these ones so that's a bit better I, this is a perhaps I need to work with uh, more details and in this background. These were fun, there's like metallics in them. So yeah, I think it's possible to have a bit more detail, not too many details because I don't want to take the focus away from what's going on, but this is a bit too dull to my taste. I'm not exactly sold on this result. a bit more um, more of what I want like really darker and more intense background Yeah, all the small ones are on cellulose paper. I don't think I've done any on on cotton paper because most of these are um, Strathmore postcards or this one is Canson postcards, so it's super cheap. This is Montval watercolor paper, 140 pounds. So it's all, all cellulose paper. Um, this one I think was done with I don't know what's it's kind of sparkly so I don't remember what I did with this one but I had fun I painted a few with um fine tech colors in them I think that's that's what Dan got Dan has one with fine tech colors in it and it's sparkly it's super fun to paint I really enjoy it but yeah these are like much nicer in my opinion than like I have other these are less pretty ones um, as you can see these are I think this was gunsai paints so it's not 
it it really it's really the combo of the whole bind paints and the cellulose paper that in my opinion wields the best result those were Gansai, I think. This one I don't remember, but it's not super convincing. This either. This one is really sad. Super duper sad. This one is too. This is not super impressive. I tried to do some with the uh, neon colors. And I got some more with purple colors and there is a bit of hot press and cold press in there and like the thing the only issue I have with hot press is um, that when you try to remove the uh, this is one of the fine tech and even the stars I made with silver and white I think so I don't know if this shows oh yeah it shows a bit you can see the sparkle in this one we sparkle and Yeah, this one has some sparkle in it too, like red shimmer, and this one has silver shimmer in it. So these 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 worked fine. Um, so yeah, but like this is Holbein as well. This is Holbein. You can see how how dark this gets. Like when you compare it to some of the less successful ones, like this is not the same kind of dark. And it's not really space if it's not super dark, in my opinion. I was thinking I'm gonna come back with the fine tech and do uh, something on the... Because some of these are stars and some of the dots are like magic sparkles so the sparkles would get a special treatment with fine tech paints and maybe some gouache. Oh, the fine tech silver is good but the thing is that with most um, silver paints they're more like a silver mica and I really hope to find like a really chrome paint one day. I know that um, Molotov has a chrome pencil, but it costs an arm and a leg. <laughs> so I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. Uh, Fine Tech is a type of paint that is um, metallic. It's called um, Coliro right now, I think. They changed the name, but it used to be Fine Tech. And this is the gold and one silver palette. And it's, I really like it. It's my favorite shimmer paint, but um, yeah, the silver is good, but it's not quite um, perfect. <laughs> and the thing with these is um, you don't use your favorite brush on these, you use any other brush you have. And you um, you wet the pans, and you let it sit for like a couple of minutes, and it's gonna soften, and it's gonna be good to use after that. Um, I could try silver leaf, but I think that makes a lot of dust as well, and um, and yeah. So I, I'm a bit split. I, I haven't found what I'm looking for yet. Yeah, a, a kind of a shiny but flat silver. Um, I did some paint with uh, some watercolor paint with aluminum at some point, uh, but. Um, the thing is, is that aluminum as a mineral in paint, there's like, I'm easily scared of stuff and there's a m miniature risk of hit creating, um, termite, the, the, the fire thingy, like what they use to burn terminators in, <laughs> in terminator. And, um, like it's, 
it's something that that burns really hot and it can create kind of a termite reaction with um, iron oxides or something which is also present in paint so uh, I already have a Holbein's gold and silver Liquid chrome, the ones uh, the one I found was th they only had the bottle, like the refill bottle, and it was twenty five dollars. I don't have access to any other um... silver ink. Is something I'm looking into. I have quite a few. Like I have these, they're not even open yet. Silver mica. Uh, but I have I have a bunch of acrylic inks as well. I have the Cinelli ones. I have the Colorex one. Like I'm really. I could I could do a long video about metallic paints. I have a bunch. I really don't know why this is yellow though. I'm gonna pick up a bit of water. So yeah, it's it's a really nice um, shimmer color, but it's not it's not quite. I think what I could get good results with eventually is if I was rich enough to get um, the silver foil and a foil machine or a laser printer. That would be really shiny chromish silver. Like there is um Cinelli ink, but it's made with shellac. Um, there is the Colorex. Colorex uh, watercolor. Yeah, it's a watercolor ink. doesn't show super well on this lighter background like it's so easy to find gold paints that work well I just I just need to find a silver that works for me not that these all work for me like I'm happy using these but they're not quite the perfect silver yet Nail polish uh, is super super shiny, but it stinks, and I'm not sure it's archival. Like, if you frame something with nail polish, what happens to it over time? Does it yellow? Um, yeah, the foil for nail art that could work, and you just gotta use what like um, diluted glue for it, I think. So yeah, I don't know if you can see the shimmers on these. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So um Yeah, this is the fine tech one. It's it's much shinier than the ink. The ink is really flat on this. <sighs> First world problem. So yeah, but I mean, I really like using the the Colero Fine Tech colors. There's a a lot of them, and and you can basically get any kind of shimmer color you want. If you want green apple shimmer, there is one. If you want um, midnight blue, there is one. If you want a black shimmer, there is one. Um, they they keep on adding colors to their collection, like two or four per year, like. There's always new colors, so you can you can eventually get the one you really want. So yeah, um, that's about it for me. Um, my voice is <laughs> a bit scruffy, so I think I'm gonna call this. Unless this is dry, and I can do a bit more on it. 
Hi, Captain. I keep on bumping the camera. Sorry. So, you can see that the clouds have basically disappeared, which is usually what happens with um, white gouache. It, it's visible when it's wet and then it dries and you can't tell where it is anymore. So I'm gonna make a mix a bit thicker. Tamiya acrylic and chrome silver. Oh, I should really look into that. I almost can't see where I put the <laughs> the white cloud the first time around. It's it's a bit bit pathetic, you know. <laughs> yeah, there shouldn't be cloud over some stars. What am I doing? I was uh, checking on um, an interview uh, with um, Ira from um, Iraville and she was saying that she works on many paintings at once because yeah there's always this stage where you gotta let stuff dry and I'm guessing that since she uses uh, cotton paper as well <clears throat> she runs into the same issues that I do with this stuff taking forever to dry Uh, this is probably titanium white. I don't buy Chinese white because it's basically pointless. Yes, PW6. This is the Shinon Pass um, white. Someone gotta explain to me why it's only two stars of light fastness, unless it's on a range of three, but then again, white is usually really transparent. Uh, not transparent but really light fast. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly the interview but if you look at her social media at some point it was it was like a really brief thing. It was just like a day uh, of work for her and um, yeah, she was basically saying like, I wake up, I have a coffee, I paint, I grab lunch, I go to the art store, I paint some more, and the day's done. Um, does it yellow? I don't know. I've not used it a lot. So um, Otto is saying that they work up to 14 paintings at a time sometimes, and I think I should do something similar. I should really have more than one painting to work on. Problem is where to store them as they dry. But yeah, I can see how useful it is to have more than one thing going on. another layer on the br 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 bleh, broom <laughs> yep so 
So again, I'm going to repeat myself, but if um, it so happens that um, your store or your favorite website to order supplies from has the um, Escoda Ultimo brushes, um, give them a try. Uh, wait for a sale, uh, get an inexpensive uh, size or something, but um, and get, get the regular one, not the travel ones, but these are really nice. They're supposed to be synthetic squirrel, but they're not insanely soft, like they, they have a bit of spring. But the fact that they are synthetic squirrel means that they will hold a really nice amount of water and paint. So, um, yeah. Really worth it. In, in my opinion. Like, I've tried a few. I have a few synthetic squirrels and I really like these. All right, one last look at the chat and I'm gonna call this a day. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be working on this um, a bit more and try to make it work and learn as much as I can from this one so that when comes the time to do the final version, um, I know a bit better what to expect. I still wanna do a booklet with all of these pictures but yeah, I really need to start on repainting them. Like I've started fixing the drawing for the first one. So I need to um, get rolling with that and, and paint it. And yeah. So uh, last round of questions. Oh yeah, the IKEA pan holder is to keep paintings. That's a really nice idea. You know the the things that you hook up inside your cabinet doors to have um, pot lids. These are that's a really great idea. And I think it's interesting to do this in a way that fits what you can do. If you can't work on big big painting, have many small paintings have many simple things going on um, or have one of them if that's what you have the time and room for it it's just the the um the, just to keep it rolling i was considering making uh, a watercolor sketchbook just about doing abstract stuff in it which is not something i usually do but sometimes it's it's like this urge to work with the paint and the stuff and no idea of what to draw well i could just start from my inspiration being a color and working with that rather than trying to come up with a situation or set up to use the color like just wanting to use the color being the reason why i use the color not i want to use this color so i'm going to draw something that uses this, this color and then eventually i'm going to paint it if the drawing is good enough and i like it and i transfer it okay and blah. it's not as spontaneous as one would like Yes, well, thank you everyone in the chat for being there. I hope you had a great time. I had a great time. I really enjoyed this. And like I always say, if uh, you... Hey, Miki, I didn't see you come in. Um, so yeah, if, if you can stay for five minutes, that's fine. If you can stay for the whole time, that's fine as well. Don't feel pressured to um, be there if you can't or stay if it stretch zone. If you have to go, you just go and it's okay. No problem. I need to have some galaxies on the go. Yeah, well, I have the small ones you saw and I painted a couple of bigger ones, but for some reason, the smaller ones are really the funnest ones to paint. So yeah. All right, well, um, thank you everyone and uh, see you next Saturday with uh, more CD Cat adventures and more CD painting adventures. <laughs> so um, yeah, hopefully this will be done by then and we will start painting another one or possibly more than one painting if I'm stuck in the same situation where it doesn't draw uh, dry. And maybe I will paint one on cellulose paper just to have um, kind of a... Um, a frame of reference.
So yeah. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you very much for being there. And don't forget to go pet a cat or um, a pet or steal one if you don't have one or borrow one or sneak up on the neighbors. Or I can give Peko some hugs if you want me to. <laughs> Bye-bye.